Hello, welcome back to HCS Weekly, your weekly destination for all things HCS. I'm your host, Shy Wait. We are back yet again with another week, more news and more interviews. we got some amazing guests, some Halo champions coming on the stream today, too. So stay tuned. Of course, we are less than two weeks away from DreamHack Anaheim. Finally, we're getting a Halo event on PC, maybe some potential for mouse and keyboard. I know that, you know, so far it's looking like very controller dominant, but nice to see a Halo event on PC. Nice to have Halo playing at 144 to 240 FPS, some buttery smooth Halo should be pretty exciting. Of course, before we get into the actual meat of today's episode, we got our news. We got to talk about what's what's happening in the world of Halo with Maddie Rums from DoobCombo.com. That is a mouthful to say. Maddie, how's it going? I'm good, dude. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah. I'm getting through it one one week at a time. One syllable at a time. One syllable at a time. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of sick recently i don't know i've got like phlegm or something and i can i can feel it and it like it it just makes me stumble i don't know if, if that happens if you're just gotta cough know, it up got yeah but I, i'm trying not to cough because that's you know we're in the middle of the broadcast i can't interrupt that's you. true yeah you, you have the little <laughs> you need your voice that i can forget about that uh yeah i'll drink water how you doing man how's how's the news looking uh a little slim but there's some there's a few things there's a few things i see yeah. uh I see nameplates, but but before we get there, give me give me the rundown on the yeah, playlist well, updates. Well, the nameplates are part of the new uh, winter contingency event that's taking place on uh, Halo Reach. Okay, it lasts until the 18th. It replaced the Halo C anniversary. It's a social playlist, and it, it revolves around uh, there was a game type called Freeze Tag. Okay, I'm unfamiliar <laughs> with, but. If Damn it! Was, there, I was hoping you knew what it was. There's different game modes that all revolve around that. There's like freeze tag, freeze flag is one. Cool. Uh, apparently, you have to freeze your teammates, or you freeze the opponent, and your teammates can help thaw them out. So uh, how do you lock up a player? Like I'm, I'm that's what I don't if, know. I don't know. If, I guess it's, I don't know if it's when you shoot at them or and I'm it forces sure. them into armor lock or something or like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. I haven't played it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm kind of curious. There's two, uh, there's two nameplates you can earn. One is the focus rifle nameplate, and you get that from completing five matches. Yeah. And then there's the winter contingent contingency nameplate that you'll receive, as well as the focus rifle one, if you complete 15 matches. Awesome. We I see them here in your document that you prepared for me. They look pretty cool. I, I like the the winter contingent contingency one. You've got a, you got a little skull in here and like yeah. this cracked glass. Um, or maybe that's ice. That's probably ice. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully, I guess we don't have an, an image to show, but you guys, if you grind, you grind the freeze tag playlist, you'll, you'll get to pick them up. Um, we have some Halo 5 updates as well. Uh, yeah, the social, uh, not social playlist, but a playlist update. Uh, it's still double XP in the doubles playlist. Okay. That goes for the whole month. Valentine's uh, doubles, right? I <laughs> believe so. Yeah. And then on Thursday, the 13th, uh, Community Slayer rotates in for Roman King, and Warzone Assault goes live for the weekend. Okay, more more playlists rotating in. I don't know if you noticed uh, if you played any Halo Five recently. They trimmed out a lot of the playlist. They really yeah, kind of narrowed it down to a slight few. Yeah, it's it's really starting to happen now. So I, I guess you know with the lower population numbers, you really want to focus them in, in the most popular, you know, uh, you know, most entertaining playlist. So good good to see. I, I think I like having a lot of playlists too, but you know. Yeah, it helps deal. with search times. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's rough, especially during the day. <laughs> uh, what do we got for uh, development updates? We got Halo uh, C coming up. Yeah, Postum's made a little update uh, to his blog for Halo C. They sent out invites for Ring One and Ring Two players. Those are it's not the public uh, flight; it's like the privately chosen players right. to test. Mm -hmm. And they said if all goes well, which was last weekend, the, this past weekend. If all goes well, then flighting, public flighting should happen early this week, but it is Tuesday, so I don't know what's considered early and yeah. what's late. And the, the if all goes well statement, uh, I feel like usually they delay it a little farther than, than if they say that, unless they're like 100% sure. Yeah, it depends on what bugs they find. and what. Yeah, I'm expecting, yeah. So we're already in early week. Hopefully we get it by the end of the week. Uh, it'd be nice to just play more Halo on PC, play some Halo CE on PC. Curious to see how that one uh, plays out. We have roster announcements. This is uh, uh, what were they before that? They were they were IDK. They were yeah IDK K K K for yeah. four Ks. <laughs> yep. But uh, Inf Infinite is back and they picked up the roster of Ryan Noob, Rain, Reliable, and King Nick. Right. 
who have been yeah. doing pretty well. Really well, right? They I, I don't know if they won one yet. They, they got like second place, I think, like almost consistently. Yeah, least. I think they've been in top four and they placed second once. Yeah. I remember right. Yeah, so really, really good looking roster uh, picked up by Infinite. Infinite doing doing a good job picking up the rosters that are that are looking pretty clean. We'll see how they how they do come Sunday though. That's where where they trim all the fat. Um, we've got tournament results in the meantime. Qualifiers are done. Yeah, we had the fourth and final qualifier for Anaheim. First place was Tox Gaming. Second place was Infinite, and third place was Unlimited. Okay. There you have it on screen. You can see so many recognizable names. A couple uh, names we haven't seen in a little while, like Flame Sword, come back, which is awesome to see. Um, nice to see Queen in there too. And Guardians Gaming, uh, pretty good placings as well. So a lot of a lot of great players. Kratos is back. Oh no, yeah. it's an interesting <laughs> team. It's an interesting team. Yeah, that's an interesting. Like, did not say Kratos suspected straight six. So some really uh, interesting talent coming into this tournament. I hope. Lethal makes a, a mouse and keyboard switch at some point. If they're feeling themselves, they're up 2-0 in a seri series. He uh, swaps over. Get to see a little bit of that action. It would be pretty nice. Uh, we've got some tourney times. Mythic Swatten time. What's this? Uh, it's the streamer from Swat Nation, one of the, I guess, founders. Uh, Nap Times is his new tournament mm. uh, organization that he does. But it was a 2v2 Halo 5 Swat but with the mythic settings. So just the thrust and what was it? Thrust and I don't remember what the other one was. Oh, uh, mythic. Yeah. So no sprint, uh, higher jump height, right? Uh, increased speed. You got faster base movement speed. Yeah. So it's like evolved classic settings. Basically right. you got the thruster, you still got the stabilized, uh, the thruster takes longer to come back. So yeah, a lot of little changes, uh, that are pretty cool. The, the main, main, I don't know if I want to call it an issue. It's just the BR. It just is so yeah, strong. Was, yeah, I, that's one problem I had with it too. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, but so, lovely graphic they got here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's done by him. I didn't have the time to make one. Yeah, but uh, first place was Falcated and Bound. Yeah. Second place was UEG and Gold Star BR, and then third place went to NSG Serial and Smoke You Dig. Nice. A lot of recognizable names here from the SWAT tournaments. These guys are are competing right. regularly in the in the SWAT tournaments and uh, Bound especially, always killing it. So uh, so once again. I'm sure they. I'm sure they have more events coming up very soon as well, right? We got our upcoming tournaments. Yep. Um, we do have a SWAT nation in there. Okay. Uh, read them. Read them off. What do we got? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, the twelfth. There's a uh, game sharks and Pen Halo Halo Reach two v two on okay. PC. Thursday, the thirteenth. Pen Halo is also holding uh, bi-weekly Halo Reach free for all tournaments at Gamers Heaven in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Awesome. But the first one is tomorrow. And then Sunday the 16th, we have Microsoft Store Halo Reach 2v2 and SWAT Nation's Don't SWAT Cupid Halo 5 4v4. There you go. There's the SWAT Nation event. Good to see Halo Reach events happening in Microsoft Store still. They're still keeping that up. So if you guys are near any local Microsoft Store, you can join this Halo Reach 2v2 event. And of course, if you're in these locations as well, there's other events going on locally. It's great to see. We have, of course, DreamHack Anaheim is the big one to look forward to. And we're so close to that, less than two weeks away. Uh, and in the meantime, you can keep grinding and, and get ready for this big event. I think that's everything we got for news today. That's all I got this week. Yep. All right, Maddie, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again next week. Yeah, take it easy. No problem. That's everything for today's news. I'm excited to welcome our Halo champions. Today's guests are Saiyan and Ola on HCS Weekly. What's hey. up, guys? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, hey. good. How's your uh, day going, brother? My day's going all right. It's going better now that you're here. I, I got a little disclaimer, though. Uh, as you guys can see, there's a, a lovely photo photo of of Ola on screen here. Unfortunately, Ola doesn't have his webcam right now, so he's he is here in in just his velvet voice. He's here that, to, wait, to christen us. A webcam version of me? I thought that was he's moving. You're just very wait, still. No, that is live. That is live. <laughs> don't don't let Shyway fool you. Oh my god! Listen, you don't <laughs> want to see me in when I'm moving. <laughs> I I think I do, but but this is you all know. you can handle right now. Okay, <laughs> that's, okay. That's, that's totally what I meant by that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how you guys been how how's the reach grind is it is it good is it bad is it so 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 is it it's not infinite yeah i, I guess that <laughs> so so is probably the right way so, to put so. it it's it's reach it's pc though it's like there's a balancing act it's it is reach mm. but the uncapped frames higher resolution all that stuff still is 
it's good enough. So it'll have to do for now, at least in in my opinion. I I think Justin, you can elaborate on that how you feel too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love obviously that Halo is on PC. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, obviously, on cap frames, nice. It's smooth. You know, in general, when it comes to any game coming to PC, just being able to customize things is key. That's just kind of what makes PC games superior Mm -hmm. and why you got the PC Master Race out there. But, uh, you know, I still think Reach is just not the game I'm looking for right now, but I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. Do you you know what you're looking for? This is just Infinite. This is just nothing really else. I'm holding my breath for Infinite, but... You're going to have to hold it for a while there, dude. Yep. And we've yeah, been yeah. uh we've been needing some auction for a while. Let's put it that way. That's just all there is to it. We're gonna have to keep on holding it. Oh my! The time comes. Yeah, you know, I just because realistically, I mean, I there hasn't been that many FPS games that have come out that I've really enjoyed, you know, yeah. in the past decade, really. And it's just, and that goes deeper than just Halo. It's just yeah. you know, like there's like you know, Apex is pretty cool, but it's a BR game. I don't really like BRs. I played Fortnite, but uh, meh, you know, not a first-person shooter either. Exactly. Um, so it's just kind of like you know, oh, man, I need I need the itch to get scratched, man. That's what I need. Yeah, just need the fix. That's all. Yeah. We need. Here's your tweet, by the way, uh, and this is uh, a lovely tweet here. Fans of FPS have been waiting and wanting a new competitive game we can get lost into. I feel like I've been holding my breath. There you go, waiting for the next FPS to excite me. And let me tell you, not having oxygen for this long has been tantalizing and frustrating to say in the least. Uh, what does the the market look like for FPS? We've got Apex. What about Escape from Tarkov? That's like, that's the game right now. Like, I, Summit left Halo. He went to Tarkov. He's hitting like 40k now. Have you played <laughs> that at all? I have not played that. It's you know that's cool. I, I find that interesting, but that's mm-hmm. like uh, I'm looking for an arena shooter, right? Like something where you have to aim at somebody longer, and <laughs> you know, just essentially Halo. Like I want. What I really want is I want Halo 2 with advanced movement. That's what I want. Ooh, and I know yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get owned for saying that. But how much just, advanced movement is advanced enough for you? Uh I'm okay with having sprint and infinite. I, I know some people are gonna be like, whoa, damn. You know, oh my you god. Hate Halo. Well, I don't been, want Halo. You don't succeed. like traditional Halo. It's <laughs> just like, nah, man, I just at the end of the day it's FPS for me. It's not a matter of Halo or whatnot. Yeah. I want, I just want something that takes mechanical skill and not only shooting, but also movement. So my, my number one fundamental thing I want is good base player movement. So I'm yeah. able to shoulder peek and move around quickly yeah. and make, you know, essentially be decisive and make, you know, it just provides a skill gap. That's what I want. Just needs, just needs good gameplay. Doesn't, I, I said that, I said that for a while now, because originally like I was still in the heat of the debate, like probably a good year ago where it's like. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of do want it to be more classic, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But now it's just like I, I just want a good game. I, I think after playing a good amount of Apex, like I think that's a good example of a game that's pretty balanced, even with a lot of uh, crazy things involved. Um, yeah. But just like how Justin's saying, like just the base movement and just the movement in general is very clean, very crisp. And I think um, with a new engine involved, I, I saw a new article that was talking. It's pretty generic with from Gamespot. Or, GameSpot, I believe, from about a few days ago, talking about a, an interview with the guys at 343 talking about how they have, like, a whole new landscape. Like, the, the people programming have just a whole new landscape to make, like, to try new things out. And just, it's so much easier, so much better than it was before. And I think, like, I, I think that's just going to be what makes this game so much better. But obviously, we have to wait until we actually see some gameplay. It I mean, sounds it great. What, what what you're saying sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, like, that's the thing. Like, even if there's values on things, it's like, this is too slow, this is too fast. It's like, right. it should not be a problem anymore. Like, Halo right. 5, it took, months, it took months to get a glitch where you thrust it into a wall to get taken out of the game, yeah. like, where you still live. So, yeah. like, stuff like that should be just, it should be just like a fly in the air in this new engine's, like, face. That, that's the way I see it, so. Yeah, and that's a really good point, care. though. The, uh, the glitch you mentioned, you get stuck in Halo 5. If you thrust it into a wall with a sticky on you, then you would, the sticky would get disconnected into the wall and blow up and you'd stay alive. Like that's, that's the type of glitch that needs to be patched quickly. Um, 
uh, Ola, you had mentioned having like a faster base movement. I wonder if sprint would affect that though, right? Because when you have sprint, you don't want the base movement to be too quick. There's like a weird sweet spot. Playing Halo Reach, what do you think of like how it feels? Is it too like, do you think it's like a little too skatey? Like you throw your weight around a little too much? Like should it be snappier? Isn't it, isn't it like 120 movement speed yeah, I in think Reach? It's faster in Reach than, than it's uh, usual, of course. But Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 120, which is obviously really fast. So that, it can feel a little skatey. Sometimes there's times where like you have like a rocket launcher and you're like, all right, I'm going to push this guy. And then he's in your face so fast. <laughs> so it's still like, oh my God, I gotta, I, now I got to kill myself. <laughs> and yeah. I'm taking you yep. with me, bro. Yeah. And so it's just, it, and sometimes it doesn't work out that way because you try to shoot past him and then you end up, he just melees you and kills you. And then you're yeah. like, oh, I just messed up. But it's, so there needs to be a balance there. Like how in Halo 5, they brought sprint in and whenever you get weak and you sprint, your shields don't come back. I think if you have a fast base player movement, whenever you put sprint into the game, sprint doesn't need to be that much faster than the base player movement. It just needs to be a way to be yeah. able to get somewhere faster. I kind of like Apex in the sense that Sliding can get you to go kind of far, but it's more momentum based if you're going down a hill. And it's, you know, something like that where it's, you know, yeah. it's not it's not too crazy, but it's just but that's also, I mean, it's a BR game and the map's huge, so it wants you to be able to get around quickly. Yeah. So yeah, Halo that's, has to that's find definitely like, where the balance. skill gap comes in. That's where like it's like the mi the very minute like details where it's like yes. a sprint being just a little bit faster. It's nothing crazy, but even if it's just a little bit faster, you can already move fast, but just mm -hmm. that little extra little extra boost when you click a button. That's like and, you have to make that like conscious decision to press that button, especially if it's nothing crazy. Like right. that's why, that's why I think Halo Five at least had a little bit of a like discrepancy with like even though it was a skill gap with the movement, I hundred percent agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think just it's so easy to press sprint thrust slide. It's yes. not that difficult. It's it's it does a lot for so little and I think you need I think it's okay to have that, but to the degree that it was, I think is like excessive. So I think to be more modern, to be more yep. enjoyed by casuals and competitive players, it needs to be a little bit more balanced in that yeah. aspect. So free launch, the thrust slide. It just it launches you for free, basically, right? As long as you got the flat surface. I, I like that idea, Ola, though, is uh, having like momentum-based sliding. So if you have a downward ramp, then it goes a little bit faster. And, and sprint, not it doesn't need to be that much faster. It's really just kind of a conduit to everything else, right? Like sprint allows you to slide, or it gives you a little bit more momentum behind the thrust. So your other mechanics, you know, could be more effective in a crucial moment. So it's not really just, I, I guess you're right. It's not just about having like a higher sprint speed. It just, just that tiny bit so you can do other things, you know? You can mix other, other elements into the game. Yeah, you know, like you get, like, for example, you get the enemy team weak and you know that they're weak, but they're shields come back at a balanced pace so it's quickly but you also know that you can sprint in there but the moment you sprint you can't shoot as fast because you have this you know the animation so you can't pull your gun up really quick so it's like do i sprint at them and potentially have them poke around a rock or whatever you know they're hiding behind and then they get free shots on me or do i just walk at them quickly and just keep holding the angle mm. it, it becomes more decisions and therefore you know you can make more mistakes definitely definitely 100%. yeah Though Halo 5 had an instant shot at a sprint, though. I just did a, a video on this. Remember, the Magnum shoots instantly at a sprint. That was one of the biggest things about uh, Halo 5's aggressive combat being so powerful, right? Like, that's why you yeah. have Splice, like Shotzi, just flying in your face, because he can instant shoot at a sprint. So he's slide-challenging everything. Yeah. That was a, a problem I had with it a little bit as well. Same with, like, clambering, how the clambering just kind of... The animation looks strange, you know? The animation was, yeah. They could do a literal 360, and you're just like, what the heck? Like, they didn't even think you're back smacking the guy, but he's actually looking right at you, ready to throw a sticky, Justin. Yeah. yeah. Straight, you know. He's ready to outplay you, even though he's not looking at you at all. And obviously yeah. the spamming of it, like people can just go do it over and over and over again, and so they're just like peeking you and shooting you, and you're just kind of like, all right, that just doesn't seem like it should be in the game. Yep. That's yeah. The the spamming is my biggest issue, especially if you're on a piece of cover that's sort of raised, like it's like a slope. Like the, there's the ledge and then it slopes upwards. Like if you think that top, that piece on top mid on plaza, drop dropping back on that, when you drop back, you can barely see the player, but you can still yep. fire shots if you're spamming it. It's it's so powerful. It's too powerful. That regret were the worst. Those yeah, two. regret when they're top regret. middle. Oh, oh, dude, on the outside of, yeah, like the ring three thing. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Um, but I was thinking, and I don't know if you guys saw that recent leak. We're kind of skipping through. I was thinking of talking about this towards the end of our discussion. Have you heard of, of the uh, the grapple hook leaked yeah. image? Yeah. What do you think about that? What do you? How do you think it might work? Let's say there is a, a grapple hook. Like, 
How do you think it would play out? And would that is there a good version of a grapple hook? You think that that would work for Infinite? Can we go first, Tommy? Yeah, yeah. You go, go ahead. It. You talk about it. So my opinion. So we could take Reach for example, right? Mm -hmm. There's jetpacks on the map that you can pick up and use, and it's really not. It's kind of frustrating, but it's not. If if there's a balance to it, it can be. You know, like so say, as long as you don't just spawn with one. Right, mm. you have to go actually pick it up on the map, and only one to two players can have it, depending on how what the map is and what's going on. I don't see it being that bad because as long as you can't shoot while you're grappling, like it's a, only a way for movement for you to get to point A to point B. I don't see that being a problem. I think, honestly, my personal opinion is I think a lot of Halo players are jaded and afraid of change, and right. not willing to yep. try these things. <laughs> and I think anything can be good if there's balance. And if they just do it the right way, and I think it could be, I think it could be pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I definitely could see like the way I see a grappling hook being implemented definitely could fit like that, like how spring jump clamber got you to like just those extra spots around the map and H5 right. or jetpack fits that role for reach where like on, on Halo 5, you get from bottom tower to top tower, even though that's kind of broken for every single person to do. <laughs> I think personally, I think if one, like Justin said, if one, maybe two people max have like that possibility. Like that, I think in itself is like an extra, extra decision to think about, extra power up or power up uh, thing to think about and work around. And then at least like maybe that range where it's like you only get to one level extra, but yeah. you kind of have a little bit more, if it is a grappling hook, you have a little bit more room to play with. And obviously, like momentum and whatnot, like however it would work, kind of like Apex. But Apex, obviously, it's a whole character around it, so he gets to have a little bit more crazy momentum and things like that. Yeah. But for Halo, I definitely think just if one person, two people max, get get it, then I can definitely be fine with like seeing it just used where it's like an S1 to S2 or stuff like that on any sort of map where it gives that just that even faster uh, sort of height, getting to that height, I guess. Oh, yeah. For example, this is going to be, I'm going to use Sanctuary just because it's, you know, it's easy to think about. Sure. Say we have them trapped in rocks and you have a grappling hook and then it's the fastest way you can get to them. We know they're weak. You just grapple hook from their bond to their flag ramp, which sounds super OP, but. Bond to their flag, wow. Okay. Like you literally, you're their bond and you put it on their health pack and you're able to hit their flag ramp with it. Or you can just do it, because I'm sure you could do it on the ground. You could do it just to kind of get a little boost. Yeah. And then you get on their flag really quickly. and if and the real problem with Reach is your shields take so long to come back that that would be OP as heck. But in Halo 5, your shields came back really quickly. In Infinite, I hope your shields come back quickly. So therefore, you're not reach, out of the definitely. fight. Yeah, so you're not out of the fight. So you're able to fight this person, but they can get in position quickly. But the thing is, is they fought for that grappling hook to get it, so they deserved it. It's the same thing as an overshield or a camo or sure. rockets, anything, right? So if they, you know, say it's on rockets bond ring one. This is just an example, but it's... It, that just kind of adds a whole another layer of being like, I need to make sure we got to fight for this grappling hook. We got to, and then say yeah. like a player like Shotzi, for example, gets the grappling hook and you're like, we know Shotzi has it. So we need to play around the fact that Shotzi has the grappling hook. Yeah. Which yeah. I just think adds another layer to it. And, and I'm not, I'm not advocating grappling hooks. I'm just advocating that there can be complexity. Change. There yeah. can, I think Halo, like the, I feel like the route with Halo is, I think a lot of people that are purists with old Halo, they think it needs to be baseline. It needs to be what it was always, forever. That's what they think. And I think in the market nowadays, that is not what it needs. I think Halo got away with being as basic as it was because like that was the first of its kind with sure. the FPS. And like you didn't need to do much. Now that now you have Overwatch, you have Apex. I mean, CSGO is CSGO. It's just been around forever, and it's just the gameplay itself is so clean. It's basic, mm. but it always has, it always has been at least. But there's other uh, substitutes in the market right now that are just just better to look at. There's more to it. There's more complexity to it. And uh, I think we always end up talking about how like melee is for Smash. You yeah. and I, whenever we talk about it, it's like that's why people love that game so much compared competitively compared to like everything else because it's like. I, I was I even mentioned it the other day. Like I feel like Smash Melee is the Halo Five, like in that sense. Even though it came yeah. out way longer ago, like it's more technical. It has more to okay. it. I, like we can get into conversations about what's broken and what's not broken. But I think sure. like for Halo to grow, we just need it needs to be more complex, but it needs to be balanced at the same time. Like Definitely. it needs more to it, and I think that's what Halo needs um, to ju to just get get people playing it more. More people playing it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, definitely an interesting point, having it as like something to pick up on the map rather than starting with it. Because I, I can't imagine a grappling hook that you start with that isn't very yeah. powerful. Like it's just a grappling hook, like shit. Like the, the verticality you can get, like unless it's like a little wimpy one, like I don't know what you would do if you started with it. Um, I remember you guys talking or saying, I, I think you said something about like varying up the weapons in the sandbox, having a huge sandbox with so many different weapons. Like this almost seems like a mobility focused weapon, like a power weapon, yeah. you know sort of, but focused on mobility. So you could even take that concept and apply it in other ways. Like, uh, even like if you take like equipment in Halo 3 where you throw out the grav lift, but I was thinking, what if it comes out faster and it's sleeker and you hit a very specific height with it so it's used for a very specific situation. Well, um, just but, to tag on that, it's like, it, yeah. can, like, Halo has such like a crazy sandbox that you can you work can do with. so like, much. Yeah. Just because of like the realm of like, it's science fiction, you can do whatever you want. It's like, <laughs> Even in the simplest form of like, instead of it just being a power up, it could just be a weapon that is a grappling hook. And then uh -huh. if you somehow, and if it's not like a hit scan, maybe it's a projectile, and you shoot sure. it at somebody. Oh, it can hurt to too. Yeah, like yeah, they like, or it bring somebody into you. Into like, you. Get exactly. over here. Yeah. <laughs> and you can still use it as a grappling hook. It's like maybe you have a certain amount of shots, stuff like that. It's like there's so much to it that Dude. they can work with. And it's like, yeah. so like that's just something simple. Like that's just a grappling hook that we've thought about in other games or seen in other games. Like they could come up with so much. Well, and that's just what I. It would be I, cool. So, if it has like say four shots, you can only use four grappling hooks, right? And then it's a secondary weapon, so you have to drop a potential good weapon so that you just have this secondary. And so therefore you're giving up potentially a good gun or maybe you're getting rid of your worst gun, but that, that gun might help you out in a situation and then that grappling hook ends up screwing you over. There you go, it's another decision, another, another way in the options there. Always has so. to be a balance of risk and reward. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, and yeah, other than that, I'm just thinking like, is it going to be like a Legend of Zelda hook shot or is it going to be like a, like a rope swing type thing? You know what I mean? Like how, how are they going to do it? I guess we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, it, hopefully it's like Apex, honestly. Yeah. yeah they like, would it, it, one, I definitely would say you, it's a pull and a bit of a swing kind of. Yeah. 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 They, like give me some momentum, like make it where, you know, I can look to the left and then flip to the right and I can really get a good, nice swing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. like, it's, and if I, but that's what makes a skill gap right there. Cause then if you mess up and you're like, you yeah, know, you, right. you end up out in the open, you're like, oh, yep. hey. oops. <laughs> definitely mess up your grapples. I've done it plenty of times playing Apex. It, yeah. it can definitely yeah. mess it up. Uh, all right, cool, cool. Glad, good to have something to talk. Even though it's a leak, we we don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's it's, it's yeah. nice to speculate something. You know, I, I hope there's more, there's more leaks. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got more tweets from Ola here. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. I think somebody asked you some questions on Twitter that you then answered, uh, and you just what you're up to currently, your favorite game of all time, and what's your favorite snack. We got Halo Reach, Halo Two, or Legend of Zelda: or Green of Time. Too tough to pick, and then boiled peanuts. Yeah. You're because you're southern. What what's boiled peanuts even even taste like? Uh, so since I'm from I'm from South Carolina and you know southern people, we just we we boil our peanuts sometimes. <laughs> I was really surprised to find out that some people don't know what boiled peanuts are. Somebody yeah. a few days ago. I don't think I I've ever had a that. boiled peanut in my life. I don't. Uh, I would say they're way better than normal peanuts. Yeah. They're just softer, and usually they you know they'll put them you know in a pot with a, a lot of people like to just load it with salt. Now, I don't try to do that because it's not healthy for you, but it does taste better. And and so it's just uh, they're softer and they just taste. Some people are like, what well, soft peanuts? That's just texture. Sounds gross. I'm a texture oriented person. I still love it. <laughs> and like it's funny because I remember when I teamed with Roy and Lunch, you know, they're from Chicago area or well, southern like Illinois. And I was like, oh, you guys never heard of boiled peanuts? They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I brought them to a tournament and they're like, no, these are pretty good. And I'm like, man, I don't think you guys like them. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> But it's just like a lot of like northern. It's it's more of a southern thing. Northern people don't really, they're not aware of it, and they've yeah. never heard of it. And it's yeah. uh yeah, man, bowl of peanuts are, they're damn good. I'm a damn Canadian. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> it's fighting hey. the winter up here, dude. Hey, is, but uh, uh, Halo Two though, and Legends of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Yes, Ooh. that's what we actually have to talk about here is Halo Two, and and I I would love to go into Ocarina of Time and why it's also so amazing, <laughs> but it is a. Uh, a Halo show. What I was thinking was uh, Halo Two Classic. What What do you think a Halo Two Classic on MCC? And and shout outs to Skulls, by the way. This is a montage from Skulls, uh, amazing Halo Two player, still doing some stuff for Halo Two. Um, but why is Halo Two your favorite? And what do you think of it on MCC on PC? Well, um, it might be my favorite from just nostalgic reasons. Um, 
And we can go back to like talking about Smash Melee and how that game was, it's literally, it's mostly great because of glitches that are in the game. Yeah, and Halo true. 2 is the same way. Yeah, BXR, BXB, which is essentially all, all the X button was or the reload was a cancellation of a your animation. Yeah. Yep. Or can, and, yeah, basically. Yeah, it cancels your animation so you're able to glitch with it. And so, and there's just so many things about Halo 2 that made it, like you could get out of the maps, like nowadays you jump out of a map and it kills you instantly. Back then you could get out of the map and go anywhere, some, like certain yeah. maps. So it was just a lot of fun. And the matchmaking system was ahead of its time. Clan matches, like, and then to top it all off, the competitive scene was just so much fun. Like, like free for all actually was really fun. 2v2s were the best they've ever been. I mean, some people would say Halo, Halo 1 probably, but... Sure, I, yeah. But it, I, I didn't get to experience Halo 1 in its prime. Um, and it's just, like for me, I feel like Halo 2 is just a, it takes way more skill than like Halo 3, for example. And it's just, you know, it, the only thing I would change about Halo 2 is I'd make the base player movement faster. Right, right. That's Which they could it. do if they wanted to adjust it, I'm sure. Can, well, can you do that? I think they have the setting. Uh, they, they might be able to now. They would, I don't know. They would probably have to. I don't, I don't remember if Halo 2 had those sort of settings. Those types the, of settings. I don't think they did until like Halo 3. Yeah. But they might have they might they would have to do that like in the engine. But I don't know if they'd even yeah, <laughs> I don't think like they that. would want to touch that. They're yeah. trying to do stuff with Reach, so they're trying to fix the crouch. I mean Oh yeah, that's true. So I don't know. We'll see. But I, I think it would be I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I coming into, you know, MCC all, all the Halos coming over onto PC, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But my only thing is that I think everybody wants something new. And I, so I think this is, you know, we're going to have, you know, you got the niche people who are just going to want to play Halo 2 or, or they're going to only play Halo 1. Right. And obviously there's a bunch of people who love Halo 3. But, like, I'm excited for it, but I'm really just more excited for Infinite. I want to play something new. So it's like I'm super pumped up. And I think I'm going to still play it, obviously. But it's, you know, I got that itch, dog. I want to learn something new. Okay. I hear you, man. I agree with you. I was just thinking mouse and keyboard Halo 2 Classic. Would this be like way more powerful than Halo Reach mouse and keyboard? Because imagine button, like doing button glitches and stuff on mouse and keyboard. Like when you've got easily accessible keys, you got a bigger reticle to aim with. It's easier to shoot, I'd, I'd think, in comparison to the Reach uh, PC. Especially like even looking at this montage, look at the bass player movement. Like a person on a mouse True. isn't going to miss you at all. Right. <laughs> and yep. so it's just. Uh... I think it might be a little frustrating. It honestly. might be a little yeah. too with the, with the macros yeah. that you can put on like mouse yeah. and keyboard. Like I, I imagine the button combos will be. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy. You're gonna challenge. get double double shotted by a guy yeah. using one button. <laughs> you get melted in two seconds. You get melted so fast if you combine two double shots like that. Even just watching this montage right here, like some of the kills he's getting, it's literally ridiculous how how quickly you get melted when you it's land it. Like a one second kill time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's satisfying to pull off though, so it, it'll yeah. be cool. I, it, it'll be cool just kind of uh, having the the pro Halo community play a game that they all really love though, like they all have like memories that they cherish. So uh, that'll that'll be cool. I know it's the, the biggest thing that'll hold it back, of course, is the graphics, and it's not yeah. new. It's not new enough. I know, Ola. It's uh, no, new. it's just it's just uh, people need. It's just a lot of like, it's instant gratification, man. Like yeah. people just need that instant gratification now. And like playing, doing something that's not new is just doesn't cut it for people for very long. They'll yeah. for you know for about two to four weeks they'll be like, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then like after that, it's like, man, I'm you know what's next? So yeah. it's it's just, I mean, for me, it's frustrating to witness because it's just like, man, like I want, I just want people to stick around just to, you know, just, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the jaded one there. <laughs> uh, it, that's definitely true. I feel like at least with Halo Two, there could be. It definitely is going to be held back by the, the the graphics and whatnot, just because it is such an older game. But I feel like to go back to that topic about like how Melee was is like it. It just will have like this is definitely like I feel like Halo Two is definitely gonna have that pace that isn't matched unless it's like Halo Five in mm -hmm. a sense of just like what you can accomplish as an individual in the game and just like. Even though you kind of still you're not sprinting, you can still move fast, but like you can hit those double doubles, the BXPs, BXRs, all that stuff, like yeah. in a flash. And I feel like those kind of like that at least is like something that can keep at least the competitive people around. Casuals, like I said, graphics will make it kind of hard to keep some people around right. for an older game. But 
I mean, if we still had something even close to like a way to mod it to like update the graphics, that'd be crazy. Ooh. Or just make H two A exactly like how it, how H two was supposed to be, then yeah, people would probably never leave that game. I'd Don't imagine. Don't get me started on <laughs> dude. If H two A was H two classic, but with H two A's graphics, that's it, dude. It's game over. Why didn't they do yeah. that? Like that's listen, bro. <laughs> I literally you I I have complained about this every single day Damn of my it. life. I like. <laughs> It had H2A, <laughs> and perfect. it was on the Halo 4 engine. Yeah. It didn't even have button glitches, and it felt like Halo 4, but with Halo 2 skin on it. Mm. And then to top it all off, they actually came out with the campaign where you could back and forth go to new and old graphics, and it had yes. the Halo 2 engine. Why didn't they make it actually Halo 2? I don't understand. I don't think, I'm, I don't think I'll ever comprehend it. You Man, don't want to know, Justin. Yeah, it's don't. broken. The casuals will not accept the BXR, dude. They're not going to like it. Ah, That's just... the thing is, you, you make a game that the pros love, and then the pros only say good things about it. And they're the ones who do kind of run the, the community and its longevity, you know? Like, if they're saying good things, they're loving it, they're generating an, audi an audience of people who also loves it and is saying good things. It's, it's like Melee. The good message gets out. But yeah. if the pro players are playing it, and they're like, I wish it was this. I wish it was this. It's just, you know, yeah, not it's, happy It's just it. the bad, the, the word of mouth, especially on yes. the people that have the most eyes on them. Even though, like, that's how it's been for Halo, is, like, the, the eyes on us has definitely decreased decreased over time but i mean that's because like over time the people that did have everything just on them it was just like no one liked it no one's saying much good no one could really come in to it like an agreement like this is this is great or this is how it needs to be it's just yeah. everyone's just like it should be different and i think it's been like that for a long time um halo 5 definitely hit that i think middle ground where like there's a lot of people that liked it there's also yes. a lot of people that didn't like it so it just it was harder for that but Hopefully with Infinite, we can kind of get a little, little bit of a good balance. I think that's, I think, even though, like, it, oh, my cat just jumped up here. He's Hi coming there. to say, coming to say hello. <laughs> but um, I was getting to my point about, oh, my God, getting to my point that we almost need to reach that sort of Call of Duty-esque, where it's like Call of Duty is Call of Duty, casual, and all the sense are in competitive, where it's like, that game is that game. Like you're still playing Call of Duty even at the highest level, but it's like it, the nuances, and of course, like they choose what weapons and kill streaks or whatever is allowed and what modes are allowed. But it's like the base game is just the base game, and that 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 definitely over time, I've definitely sort of understood that sentiment that the devs have made about finding like we want the casual game to be the competitive game, and I completely agree. But it's like you need something that is balanced. You can't just have Ground Pound, Spartan Charge, all those things that were in Halo 5 that, like, I don't even think the casuals really enjoyed that much, but it was just there. And then the competitive people hated it. So it's just, like, stuff like that really needs to, they really need to hit it right and right from the start. So that's and, all I have to really say about that. And to top off, to go even further, your point is, like, so the number one thing for Halo 5 was its mechanics. So, like, a pro yeah. player going against a casual, like, if a pro player searched social, they are going to obliterate yes. every player in that lobby because yeah. the the mechanics they won't die they kill you super easy and they literally manipulate the game and so then there's this whole disconnect that they were trying not to have in the first place yeah <laughs> where yeah. it's just i remember i played way, social dude. and i'm getting 38 kills in a 50 <laughs> kill slayer game and it's like man oh my god i like i feel bad searching yeah like i'm the i'm the bully i'm the online bully right now and it's just because I can, you know, they don't expect a player to jump out and then ground pound in the air and float for a second and then thrust back and then jump back out again. Yep. And then, yeah. like, it's just like, they're like, what the heck is this person doing? <laughs> and, you know, it's blowing their minds. And it's just because they just, it, it, fundamentally, they just don't either know about it right. or they can't do it, and which is totally fine. And it's just, that's where you got to, you know, you got to bring the community together but also realize there is a difference. Well, uh, it's going to be my mission to make sure people know about it when Halo Infinite comes out. I'll make videos that detail all of it from the ground I'll be, up. I'll be looking for them. They'll I'll be, be there. waiting for the upload. You'll know how to how to use all the mechanics. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm, hey, that's what we need, dude. We need, we do need, we need that. people we need like content. you. Thank and you. we need, I mean, like I, you, I mean, I don't do any content because I am a selfish well, butthead. I can't wait for your content when you do it, man. What's going on? Where's the streams? Uh. <laughs> 
I not to just, put you put pressure on Ed, you. Uh, you just put me on blast for all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what the? No, I, it's just I'm like so bad about being in the spotlight, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know what it is. It's just like having a bunch of eyes on me. I feel like I'm in a fishbowl, and then having people poke at the fishbowl just makes me go, "Can you stop poking my fishbowl, man? I'm just trying to chill." <laughs> And so it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's weird being in a like position of being a pro player and like everything you say is under a microscope. So it's like if I get frustrated and I say the wrong thing, then it's like, wow, he needs to really watch what he says. And it's like, can't believe he just said that. And it's like, yeah, that's true. I need to watch what I say. And so, but then it's like, you know, pro players have emotions too. You know, there there is going to be a bowling point when somebody says, no matter what field they're in, that they they do or say something they shouldn't do or say. Yeah. And it's, uh, so it's just, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking. It's like, man, I, like you almost have to keep yourself in check all the time. And that's where streaming is kind of tough because it's like, every, you know, if you're eight hours a day, it's, you know, eight hours every day or like yeah. five days a week where it's like, I can't mess up. And I'm a pretty passionate, emotional person, also known as sensitive. <laughs> and so I like, people don't bother me with what they say, but I can definitely get really like, ah, and I don't. Yeah, it's like, you know, like, so, and some people can't, you know, they don't, can't handle people who can be kind of in your face about stuff. And so it's, uh, you know, it's just a balancing act, just like Halo Infinite needs. I need to balance myself. I feel you, man. Look, timing wise, this is not the time to break into a Halo streaming. You know, I mean, maybe if you're trying to build a little foundation for yourself, but for you, you could wait till Infinite and, you know, think about it then. Um, just so you know, you're one of the most beloved people in halo despite whether or not you want to stream and like people love you man you know people love you so in the end of the day it's going to be down to whether or not you feel like you want to do it but i, I know exactly how you feel about just going on stream and feeling like you're being analyzed like i can't i can't focus when i'm streaming because I'll, I'll be trying to play and people are i know people are looking at me and i'm like worried about whether or not i should be saying something or how i should be looking or whatever and i feel like i look like an idiot and then my gameplay ends up being terrible and then i i have shit gameplay and i look like shit is what i'm thinking <laughs> and and then I, nobody would want to watch that you know you know what i mean it's like the most awkward annoying feeling it's like uh, it's not easy you got to <laughs> You're good you at it, though. You're, I, people just talk know. to you, and you you keep your cool, and you you hit all your shots like a laser. So there's no need to. Yeah, just, uh, I, I, I definitely I, go ahead, Justin. I was, I just have a problem with like overthinking. I, uh, analysis yeah. paralysis, and so yeah. therefore I'll be like, even for example, I was at the literally just at the gas station in the line, and I was just like standing there, and I'm like, how should I be standing right now? And then I'm like, why does it even matter how I'm standing right now? And now I'm thinking about how I'm standing. And I'm like, oh, nope, now I'm self-conscious <laughs> now, about now my body awareness. Anyway. <laughs> now it's over. It's game over before it began. And then, like, that's how streaming is for me. I think when I do start streaming again, because I, I do plan on doing it later on down the road, I'm going to just do no webcam, dude. Start that's, with that. Yeah, that's what I that. need, bro. I can't, I can't have people looking at me, dude. <laughs> it's just, I'm just a weird person. And I, and I just think. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it is. That's plenty. Of, I mean, that's probably why I, there's plenty of top streamers that don't do that kind of stuff, and I can completely Lyric, understand. Lyric has why. no camera, right? Yeah, I mean, so yeah. one of the top streamers. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason why they just don't want people looking at them. So I yeah. completely get that. I I definitely feel that sometimes too whenever I stream. So I'm right now. The only problem with me is trying to get on Halo and finding games, find a region like games in reach to just have the content there because I can't play head to head for seven hours straight every day. So yeah. I can only look forward to the next game. That's, That's all. A, yeah, it's a whole other problem in itself. Um, but yeah, I, in the end of the day, you gotta love it. You know, you shouldn't be torture. You should be loving what you're doing. And if that means you start with just you know with no webcam, then then go for that. You know, whatever whatever brings out the best of you. Um, as far as MCC, we're struggling to find games. One thing I was thinking uh, would be kind of cool is let's say all the games come out on PC. You get every single Halos out on PC, MCC is complete. They should do a tournament where it's like a round robin type thing where like you spin a wheel and you it lands on any Halo, any game, like competitive game mode, game type, and you have to play that. So every team comes in, they just have to be ready to play any Halo in the Master Chief Collection. What do you think of that kind of like style? Like kind of like last year with the Lethal vs. Snipe Down. Event. I think an online format could definitely online work. Online format? Okay. Land format, I think that would be a little too much. Um, I think people probably would not really appreciate it. I think maybe a throwdown version, in a sense, like how they've been doing that for Just Reach. Doing something okay. like that 
closer leading up to the launch of Infinite, where like you get a whole bunch of people into it, and then you just have everyone playing every Halo, and it's like I think that could be really cool. Um, I would definitely see that as an online format, though, for sure. I could see that doing. I like, got an event as well, but it would be more like like you were saying the Snipe Down Lethal thing, where it's yeah. like not supposed to be taken seriously. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah. that'd be the, like the main problem. Is it's like if they put like you know five thousand dollars each for people winning, like it's just like <laughs> why are you doing that? Like it's like yeah, that's so, where I was getting into one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just like we the don't final need... match Halo Four. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like it's you know for two hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> Halo Four single kill one v one because production has to leave. And uh, well, you gotta try to pick the best game mode, game type combination. Uh, whatever, it's gonna be like yeah. you can't just pick like some some whack like uh, hammers on you know Haven or some shit. Just Griff Ball all of a sudden. <laughs> it's just like all right, well. You got, it's oh, like the thing is, is that would be right dope if there was no money involved. Like if it is a little bit, like it's some incentive, right? But like yeah. if it's just like game seven, Griff Ball. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like I know if I was playing, I'd be like, you guys are going down. Like I'd be talking yeah. mad crap, just joking around, because that's yeah. what the point. It's supposed to be, because that's something that Halo kind of like, uh, not just Halo, but competition kind of misses out on, in my opinion, is like the having fun part. And yeah. yep. And I I know I'm a I, you know, sometimes I don't have fun when I should. I take things way too seriously because I've been competing for too long now. <laughs> that where I get on, hey, I can't play any game without taking it serious. Like, right. I can't play, like, I, literally, I can't get on even playing, like, Legend of Zelda, any of them, and, like, not try my ass off. <laughs> I don't, and it's so annoying because, like, because, like, you know, my friends, they go, you know, they can nine to five or they could do their normal stuff, and they, they come back home to play video games casually for fun. And I go... I, I want to do anything else besides play video because <laughs> that's what I yep. do. So, um, I've, I've, I've reached that point a few times. I at least somewhat found some games to play casually, but yeah. I'm the same way. It's just I put so much time into gaming that like... Just you the know, way your brain works now. Yeah, that I want to, whenever I have free time, I'm like, all right, either A, because like, when you're a competitor, you get this weird itch where you're like, you don't feel like you're doing enough. You're yeah. like, man, I need to get on Halo and play right now. Like I have free time, but I that's my free time should be used to be getting better. And yeah. then you start stressing yourself out because like, if you overdo anything, you're not doing it right. And sometimes I don't know, it just depends. Like you no, can't, you're right. just can't, you know, it's just balance, you know, everything in moderation. But like, you know, that like when I have free time, like I want to read a book right now. Like I want to try to, like I want to expand my mind and learn as much as I can outside of Halo. That could make me a better Halo player. For example, reading Art of War. Yeah. Something like that. You know, a strategy book. Anything. Anything that can maybe help, but then it becomes I'm reading this about Halo, and then it's like okay, like now it's just the cycle. It's just yeah. like <laughs> you gotta try to avoid overthinking it for sure. But I, I think reading is definitely good. That's one of the things that that you brought up that's really important is people are so focused on grinding, 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 playing. Like the more time you put in, the better you're gonna get. But you can you like fatigue. It's like you overdo it, and yeah, you burn out. And you don't, you're not really learning anymore. You're going through the motions and, and you're repeating the same mistakes over and over. And it's just, you're becoming worse, basically. So you got to sometimes take that break, clear your head, you know, read something, listen to podcasts, do some meditation, you know? Yeah. 100%. There's so many, so many hobbies you can do it it nowadays, you know? Yeah. There's so many avenues to be able to just kind of express yeah. yourself and just kind of de-stress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's... Continue going down Twitter here. We've got uh, another little quip from, clip from you, uh, Ola. This is not you. This is, uh, I think his tag is Shini. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shinny. Yeah. Shinny. Is it, Shinny. Yeah, sir. All right. I think we got some audio for this one. Let's play it up. Uh, maybe for the stream. Maybe not for me. What? Ew, what was that? Uh, okay, is that, is that like a reference? Something? Yeah, to my buddy actually. Yeah. One time, the one time we were all trying to go to the movies and uh -huh. we were all just being a little slow, and my buddy was like, like you know, let us go, and he just said, let us onion tomato, and like it was just so stupid. And ever since then, I just thought it was so funny. It's kind of like that T-shirt that's like, let us turn up the beats. You know, nice. all vegetables yeah. and stuff. And so it's just, he just out of nowhere, he's just like, let us onion tomatoes. And then it's just ever since then, man, it's it's in there now for me. You got to say when you land a triple kill. Uh, 
You got you got to follow up each kill with like lettuce. Right. So you hit the next night. Yeah. Onion. Tomato. <laughs> and then the fourth one is. Oh, I gotta come up with something. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it for the next day. Burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> nasty ass stuff. <laughs> See, that's the oh, thing, man. Peanuts. That's why it's nice to, and I, whenever you're ready to do those streams, though, it's it's always nice to hear, you know, you having fun playing video games on the comms. Like when when we go back to that snipe down versus lethal, one of the best things about snipe down versus lethal was the fact that you were having fun, and we could hear you having fun. Like you're like, I, at one point, you're like, yo, let's see if I can get a stick, and I think you just threw like a sticky into the air across the map or something. Like you were just kind of having a good time with it. Uh, yeah. That was the whole point for me. Is like I was taking it serious for Eric in the sense that I know Eric wanted to win. Uh, but I also want, you know, you know, I want to have fun. And yeah. I, like, that's what got me into Halo in the first place. You should have heard me when I was 14 playing Halo 2. Oh, my God. That was just. <laughs> Ooh, you missed yeah. out. And so that's kind of like, that's actually what Bravo was saying, I think, in the broadcast as well. He was like, you know, a lot of people don't get to see that side of, of me anymore. And that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier is I just I take things too seriously now. Uh, I need to bring my caring level down or maybe i need to bring my caring level up for having fun hmm. uh, I'm, yeah i'm confident it's also dependent on your environment though too like i feel like halo infinite comes out people are loving it that's that's going to change the energy you know yeah. what i mean yeah. it brings us all back out everybody's having a fun having a fun time and, and halo comes back which is what we're all hoping for the game uh, we're playing is ultimately the game we're playing that's what we're doing in the moment yeah, and if you yeah. can't enjoy that at its base like and how you yeah. can't really it's hard to make something that you just don't enjoy it fun so yeah halo fans right now are all just kind of like on pause in life like we're like you said holding holding your breath <laughs> just yep. trying to make it through this year uh yeah we got some more twitter stuff this time on saiyan side uh, like, let's look at some Halo 5 with a, a field of view adjustment. This is really nice looking, by the way. So this is what, like 120 or something? Yeah, I don't know if he said 110 or 120, but I, I imagine if we were playing on this, like, this is, I, personally, this is what we, we should be playing on right now. Halo like, 5 PC, I think. Yeah, we would, cool. we, would yeah. Not, we would not be having slow turn or anything like that. We'd be playing on what I think is probably the best settings of Halo 5 towards the end of it, and I, like, I I think it'd probably play amazing. Uh, I feel like that's where we should be, but obviously from a technical standpoint of getting it up and running, like I don't know if that's really too much of a challenge, but yeah. we're already too close to infinite anyway. But yeah, the, if we could have had anything like this during Halo 5's runtime, I feel like people probably could have enjoyed it. Because I feel like that, at least for me, that was definitely a big problem in a lot of other people's big problems which is like hit registration blood shots typical yes. rundown of halo in general and then of course slow turn slow turn is always a really big really big deal about people just thinking the game felt weird yeah so i i, I me and justin actually were talking about that a few days ago how like i played halo reach i think i just hopped on like xbox just to turn it on like maybe a month ago or something like that and there was slow turn. It felt like there was slow turn in game, and then I go to the PC version, and Interesting. there's no slow turn at all. It doesn't. I think it did, maybe it just has to deal with the uncapped frames or, mm. or what? Maybe a higher FOV. I don't know what it could be exactly, but it just makes the game play so much better. And I think, and that, that game looks good. And it, it, Halo Infinite is at least looking yeah. like that, and got some good settings. It's gonna be great. Because I basically what he's saying is like. I played the Xbox version about a month ago as well, and it's the way. I think the reason it feels that way is because it's you know, take a, what is it, seventy-eight FOV. Yeah. Right. And then also to top it off, like you're not even getting sixty frames. Like you're you're Are probably you not? not. I mean, it, Maybe, it's you're yeah. supposed to be getting sixty frames, but let's be honest. Whenever stuff's hitting the fan and then you're moving around a lot, especially the higher the sense you Maybe. play on, right? I play yeah. on a high sense, so I'm like probably getting like forty-five to. 55 area and so it's gonna it's it's crazy it's just the the difference between pc and and all the fov all just the customization yeah you're able to kind of make it more smooth and so it's like not necessarily that it it just feels heavier that's all yep. yeah it feels like you literally have heavy aim in comparison to the pc version when you're playing on like 144 240 it's way smoother and it just reacts faster the reticles just move yep. faster which that's the thing. You're right. Like PC, you get so much more flexibility and, and we can hopefully avoid some of the big problems we had with Halo 5, for example. Like heavy aim was like the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems with that game. 
for like a year or something. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, just having a higher FPS and like that not being a thing, that's that's huge. Like Yeah. yeah. So I mean when you have heavy aim in an FPS game, that's kinda like fundamentally one of the worst <laughs> things that can happen. Yeah. So that's like the number one thing you're doing is looking yeah. around and shooting yep. and like trying to, you know, hit your hit your shots, trying to be precise. Yeah. And then you have heavy aim and it's kinda like, whoa. <laughs> Like this, this, you know, there's. It took a while for actually for it to be proven that it what heavy aim was in the game. Like pro players were saying it for a long videos time. Videos and stuff, yeah, they had to use, yeah. And so it was just, uh, but yeah, that's kind of like a. I mean, I think they learned their lesson there. It's just kind of like a fundamental thing. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're making a FPS game or any type of shooting game, you got to make sure that there's no heavy aim or any type of input delay whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, I do have some more tweets here. There's one from Throwback Throwdown, and then also just talking about balancing changes being uh, being having infinite just be like updated quickly as you know as opposed to Halo Five. Uh, this here is the the tweet right here. I was thinking we already kind of touched on this. Of course, we want uh, we want quick changes in mechanics if necessary, or yeah, necessary so that uh, you know the game could perform the way we want it to. Uh, the longer they take, the you know the the faster we all leave and go do something else, go play something else. So so yep. hopefully, yeah, hopefully they've got, you know, and, and like you said, the engine's different this time around. It's going to be easier to uh, to build off of and and just to have a, a better experience overall. So that's really exciting. Um, but let's talk about what's happening currently, because we do have Anaheim in less than two weeks. You guys are on a brand new roster. Let's take a look at that tweet saying you announced this recently. We've got uh, our roster. I want to see it on screen first. Hopefully we got it. There we go. Uh, Renegade, Ola, you're here too, and then Neptune. This is a on paper. This is a very powerful roster. Tell me about this. How'd you guys get together, and how do you feel about it so far? So how we got together was originally me and Renegade kind of just talked a little bit, leading into Reach because he and I, of course, we were playing the H5Twos back in Atlantic City, and we weren't playing Halo Three, and we thought like once Reach comes around, it, it'll at least be. Especially since on PC, it'll just be a better experience playing the game. Mm -hmm. Something at least close to like Halo 5 or a little bit more modern uh, anyway. And so you're we like, all right, we should try and maybe team. And we were just looking around, and I, al I always knew Justin was a great player and one of my favorite teammates. So I was like, I want to play with Justin. John thought the exact same thing. And of course, originally we wanted to play the snipe down. And with his circumstance, like he has Apex to worry about. So um, time passes. We then pick up Neptune. Um, he originally actually was just trying to like hover around in the COD scene until maybe he got a little bit older, because mm -hmm. um, he's still 17 right now, I believe. So, wow. um, but he knew like this is a great team. He knew that we could definitely put in work, and we all cared enough to get better. And we none of us have really any sort of egos with each other. Like we are all very respectful for each other's skills and like mm -hmm. players we are. So that's just where we're at right now. We think we can, even if we're not like the best at this very moment. You know, I think we very well could be, especially I think with right. land like right around the corner. That's why I think this is going to be the biggest difference for us. Yeah. Um, like we will just keep getting better. I couldn't care less if it's Reach, Halo Three, Halo Two, Infinite. Like we will become the best team if this is the roster. That's and the mindset. That's just the way I I see it for us. Yeah, I think uh, Tommy nailed it on the head there. Yeah. So this this one of the most interesting teams I've been a part of because everyone's very chill and receptive. Yeah. Everyone's taking criticism very well. It's, okay. you know, like there's a lot of, I've had a lot of different teammates through the years where it's been a struggle to actually get better collectively. And so then it becomes like, you got to just focus on yourself as much as you can, because if you can't get better as fast as you would like as a team, it can be a problem. Mm -hmm. And with this team, it just seems very receptive to in, in new information and trying. No, Knowing that, like, you know, don't get stuck in your thought pattern. That's really important. And that's just being open-minded. And to top it all off, like, none of them have played LAN yet in this game. They've only experienced Halo Reach online, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, whenever we're scrimming. So they, they don't really know. But they have an idea what they're in for, but they don't really know yet. Yeah. And, you know, like Tox, for example, they've all played Reach on LAN. So they know what they're going into. And so there's a bunch of players that actually don't know what this this next this Anaheim event's gonna be pretty fun to watch. Yeah, 
Yeah, like if you if you look at the rosters, uh, I don't know if we have an image of the qualifier results, but it'd be nice to get that up there. There's so many amazing teams, like on the same level, you know, as far as like like any of these teams could take it. Like, of course, you got talks, and in talks, they're they're always very very strong. But then even you know, Rain, Rhino, King Nick, Reliable, Eco, Trippy, Penguin, Seller, you guys played them to close out the last qualifier. They were very strong, right? So like mm -hmm. so many amazing teams here. Like, what do you guys think looking at this roster? Like any standouts? Uh, to you, I there's definitely like a top six to top eight in my opinion that are just kind of ahead of the curve. Yeah, and uh, I mean it's like pretty much even there. The thing with the thing that's weird about qualifiers, they're single elimination, so it's like right. especially for us, we got uh, with Eric, we got round one at the first like qualifier. So our poll, we like we were actually on that. Specific qualifier, we were on the bracket with Tox and Eco's team. Uh, and so it's just like, you know, one of us is not going to make it far, <laughs> right? And so it just kind of, but it, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of good players. I think, uh, I think with the way this game is, it's going to be very interesting because it's very snowball y. It reminds me of Halo 5 in the sense that if you have a bad start, you can get steamrolled. Yeah. Everyone is a laser in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Justin that, uh, laser. The way this game is, like, the teams, at least, and, like, the commitment that I, I've definitely noticed, it's, like, it's almost back to, like, the Halo 5 ways, at least, compared to, the like, the grassroots H3 tournaments these past year, where it's, like, there's pretty much a solid top eight, I'd say. Right. There's, all, there's probably at least that one or two teams, even, like, the EU guys, um, that probably could make it in the top eight and definitely are skillful. Um, but there's at least ten teams that are pretty much the ten teams. There isn't just one or two teams like, oh, yeah, they're going to win. That's just going to be it, or it's going to be between those two. Um, I don't see it being the case. I think there's still stiff competition. And yeah, like Justin said, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this tournament turns out. Yeah. So you guys are all kind of just, I guess, banking on land at this point, right? Because that is the definitive experience. As far as the qualifiers, you said it is just like a single elimination. In your last uh, series uh, against uh, Trippy's team, how did you like? How did you feel about the way the things went there? Like, are you guys still kind of finding your groove with everything? I think it was kind of a tough series for you guys. Yeah, I would definitely say, and I think Justin can agree, is like we we all know how skilled we are individually. It's just about finding that sort of pace. And right. I think day by day, wins or losses that we've had, like we, like I said before, like we're all, and Justin said, like we're all really receptive, and we all really just want to win. So like we're just like talking about shit, going over things all the time, just trying to, like, grind it out. And do you have a coach? Did, we do have a coach. It is Tusk. Okay. Nice. Um, well, yeah, he, was of course, was very, he was a very skillful player as well, and so it's, he's also a really cool guy. So he, it's awesome to have him on board as coach. Um, and he, he talks with us as well. Um, but, yeah, we, we're just definitely just grinding out the creases. And, we like, there's just moments in games, and John even made note of it because we were definitely complaining a little bit more. Um, in that last series against them, because it was it's east to west, peer to peer against them. So it's either us or them who's hitting shots, and with reach yeah. being the way it is, it's just it, it's really just a toss up. It's just a toss up half the time with this game. Um, but there's still obviously moments where it's like, yeah, we definitely could be doing this together. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter about shots. Doesn't matter about connection. Like we could be doing this. So no matter what, it always comes back to that where it's like we know we could still be doing things better, and we want to do things better, and we all agree. So we are always looking out for those little things to pick up, even if we're losing. I mean, that's you learn the most whenever you take a loss, and then you never really lose until you give up. So that's just the way I see it, and I think our team, like, it's never really a loss for us. We're always trying to get better. Yeah. My, my philosophy is that L's and scrims in an online tournaments or the L just means learn, and then the only real L you take is whenever you're at an event. I like so, that, well said. <laughs> yeah. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's the best mindset to have. You can't, you get, like, it's, it's not over till you give up, like you said, right? So all of you guys are clearly capable. You're, all of them, all of you are individually so talented. It's just about finding that pace, that groove, and having everything kind of connect together. And you're right, on land, it's going to be the best. There's no worries of connection and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like certain plays, I just because I'm, I'm looking at uh, our Discord right now, we have so many questions in the chat. I don't want to get into uh, the actual gameplay itself i was going to grab a clip and we could take a look at it but i don't think we're going to have time at this point um but do you guys watch any vods are you guys going back and, and looking into stuff and talking about it the thing is 
that's really what is a struggle, at least, because we have a lot to talk about. So hard in reach. And yeah. we have no theater. We just right. have no theater. And we haven't really watched VODs, but I don't think we really have had to. We probably could. Um, mm. But we pretty much get right into it, like, as soon as we lose. We're just like, yeah, we, we should have been doing this it. different. We should have been doing this. Like, it's pretty fresh in our minds. So, mm. um, But it still sucks when it's like a he said, like, he said, he said kind of moment where it's like, yeah, I was doing this, and I thought you were doing that. Well, it's like, I don't even remember what I was doing at that very moment at 10 minutes in the game or something like that. So yeah. that's where theater really could have alleviate these problems. It kind of sucks that it's not here right now. Um, but yeah, we, we usually just get right into it right away. We haven't really been keeping track of too many of the VODs. I, I've been personally going back and watching uh, like other team scrims or VODs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just fun for me, and I also learn a lot. Like, uh, the, the way that I became the player that I am is I actually played a lot of Halo, but I also watched a lot of Halo. You have to. Yeah, and it's just, you know, you, you don't know everything. And no matter how much you think you do, you don't. And you can learn so much from anything like in life. And so I just, you know, you can learn so much from these other players just watching them, even for 10 minutes. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've been watching a lot. And obviously, like, I'm the only one who's on the team right now that's like experienced with this game that's actually played it a bunch. So it's like, it's been really fun for me because I'm learning from them. There's so much that they're teaching me already outside of what I already knew about the game. So, and you definitely uh, have a, sorry to interrupt you. No, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say you have a, a big history with this game. You're on the God Squad back <laughs> when this game was out. Yeah, with the with Bloom and Sprint. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, God Squad. Yeah, it's just like, you know, for example, you know, Tox, they've all played this game. And so, well, I'm sorry, I was just watching Tommy's nade come out a full second after he threw it. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just, um, we have like specific game types right now that we're not as, you know, we're not as efficient on. And we, we're actually very aware of what we can get better at right now. And that's what's important. The worst thing that can happen is when you go, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> like you're like i have no idea what to do right now and we every time after every every game we lose we always go you know i feel like we should have did this i we're not we're kind of in the process now where we're trying to figure out individual things and to work towards the collective yeah and uh yeah man i, I just just watching watching this is just frustrating <laughs> seeing this this peer to tough. peer is just tough, dude. It's uh, cause it's just you have three people on West, so when, and they have red teams, so they host three of the five games. So it's like yeah. you gotta. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm morally upset that it's not dedicated servers and anything. Yep. And yeah, so that's just, that's just where we're at, though. That's yeah. where we're at. Yep. You just gotta embrace the chaos, bro. <laughs> Yep. Seeing, um, seeing as it is already on screen, though, there is a really interesting play coming up. You guys had two big opportunities for flagpoles, um, and I think the first one's coming up here. Uh, and it's it's when you get these sleighs on tower. You'll see mm. it happen in a second. <laughs> I think I know oh, what happens. I can't wait yeah. to tell you what happened here. <laughs> you try to coordinate a spawn over on tower, and saying backs off. It's interesting to see it. I, I wonder what you think about it now. Hold on. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. Yeah, I, think it's, <laughs> I do think it is coming up soon, and I we've already talked about it plenty yeah. of times. I and think I, I think yeah. I do know what you're talking about. It was it was really it was it, it makes a lot of sense what you did. Like it it was smart, but at the same time, it kind of put you out of the field to play. Uh, and then they didn't get the spawn that you were looking for. It's yeah. coming up now, so you're fighting for OS here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You get dropped out of no shields. When he gets down, there's the kill for OS, yep. And then you get stuck here. Yep, gotta get your shields back. Oh, yeah, this is the play, 100%. Yeah, so Nep goes up, and you're like, okay, I can help you. And then you go back up Neptune, two players yep. up top tower. Uh, and then he gets killed, but then Renegade's trying to make a push in. You and Ola and Renegade trying to make a push in for the flag. Ola's got flag. They want to run it through green. Now you're backing away because you want to open up the tower spawns. But now yep. you're kind of out of play. What do you think of this? Like, how do you think it maybe should have gone down? Well, I can't remember. I thought this was actually the one where he spawned on Justin. But yeah, I was expecting the guys to kind of like speed. Because I think Justin and John had gotten at least one, maybe two picks uh, on their side of the flag. Or by like flag side and Mahler side. And, of course, I killed one guy at least, or I think Travis killed one guy. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to let let these guys spawn courtyard, and I'll just watch the plat. 
but yeah. I don't know if they got a flag spawn and just jumped up instantly or cut spawn or what happened and because they instantly got an angle on Justin. But it, I literally, like, we got, I think, two picks, three picks. But it seemed like they were able to stop the flag run instantly. So I, I don't know what happened to the spawns because I was like, I'm just going to leave courtyard open completely. And I was still kind of watching that cutoff, but maybe I misjudged, like, where we killed the people at. So I, I, I do not know. Yeah, the spawn system is kind of rough in this game. Uh, I personally think it doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, in my personal opinion, I think it's just an uh, inconsistent spawn system. There's a weird uh, one right here, too. There was actually a time early on in the game where we were completely dominating them, and I grabbed the flag, and they literally spawned cuts right in that corner to the right, looking at me, two of them, mm -hmm. while I was running the flag. And it's just like, the mauler's wide open, the needles are wide open, we're blocking, we're not even blocking courtyard, I don't think. We had top of their snipe, but we're not on the courtyard spawn. And they're spawning on the flag with me. And it's like, that doesn't make any logical sense to me. My feet are on the ground. I wasn't jumping. I was doing it on purpose so they wouldn't spawn. Yeah. And it, you know, there's only so much you can do in that situation. You just kind of go, well, they're spawning on me. We got to kill them again. <laughs> it does <laughs> and, seem yeah. weird. Yeah. I, and like, so it's like, even there, like Tommy backed up into sword. He's all the way our side sword, but they're still spawning Mauler and, yeah. and flag on us, right? And it's like, the courtyard's wide open. Why aren't they spawning there? We... We actually killed them on the fly. We were pushing them and doing. We're we have presence on the map over there, and but they're. I think really, I think this game is so influenced based on where they are. So like, if if they're if one player spawns like cuts and pushes to the flag, then all the other teammates are gonna start spawning the flag with them. Yeah. Unless yeah. we start putting damage on that guy immediately, and so it kind of really, I think it just depends on the first spawner more than anything. Yeah. It definitely seems hard to predict, because even in the end of that clip there, Stellar spawns right behind Sane. Sane, you were aware of it. I don't know if yeah. you heard him or something, but literally, like, right behind you and Mahler, and you're in Mahler. So yeah, that's it, what I, that's what we've been trying to, like, I, I remember saying, like, a, a week or so ago, it's like, just always expect, like, the worst-case scenario. It's like, <laughs> I'm blocking Mahler, but it's like, we just killed a guy and not Mahler, so he's probably going to spawn right on top of me. Right. And he does. Right. He does. So, it is what it is. That's just reach, and... The system being, I don't know. It's like, it's hard to say because I feel like it's not like Halo Five was more complex, but it just made more sense. It like, did. It's like you just stand here, you look here, shoot there. They're not going to spawn there. Yeah. That's not how it works in this game in any sense. Not really, unless you're standing directly on their spawn point. Unless you know exactly where the spawn point is and you're standing right on it, they're not going to spawn right on top of you. Maybe a little bit left, maybe a little right, maybe above you, maybe below you, but not where you're yeah. standing. So I don't know. It it is what I it mean, is. It, we it's... still have. The Figure it out. It's rough, man. I, my personal opinion, I think uh, Bungie just didn't really care about this game. So they ended up, uh, they just have a flawed system. They're, They're spawning. already making Destiny. Yeah, they were working <laughs> on that. Like I would say yeah. like 80% of them were working on Destiny, 20% yeah. of them were working on Reach. And so therefore, that's why I just think the game is just, uh, it's not a complete game. And that's totally fine. It just is what it is, you know? Like everyone's playing on the same thing. So we're all just trying to work around it. But we're kind of trying to figure out what's the what's the best way to do this. Do we try to be structured, or we just embrace the chaos? Yep. Mm. Yep. You got to roll with the punches. Just uh, try to be the the best ones out on top in the end. Hopefully, um, that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, we have uh, a bunch of lovely questions here from our chat. So uh, let's take a look at some of these to close things out. Uh, we got Sapphire Sound says the most annoying thing between the old days and new days is the fact of how much children influence the likelihood of capitalizing on streaming revenue. Where is this going? Uh, in what ways do you think Halo can compete to grab, oh, to grab the younger demographic when a lot of other game companies are also hyper aware of them as well? How do we get the Fortnite kids? Fortnite kids, well, I mean, I, like, just, the, like, what I was saying before, like, we need complexity. Mm. Doesn't, like, it needs to be, like, that Halo 5 style where there's more to it, but, like, at least for the, more general community it needs to be balanced i definitely think that's what it comes down to like fortnite just has a lot to it i think it also just has like the customizable stuff that grabs a lot of people like, that's just a big thing the battle pass things battle to work pass. for and buy skins that like represents you that kind of stuff and there's so much of it there's so much content i think that's another big thing too is just consistent output of content like mm -hmm. that like a kid can come back every week and like there's something new to work for or grind for I mean, for, yeah, for Fortnite's sort of example, like you can ask mom every week for five bucks, ten bucks to buy <laughs> the new skin or whatever it is. So, um, but 
that's not even really what I would hope Halo goes. I, like, it just needs more to it. Things that, like, you're accomplishing something. That's what I feel like Halo 5 lacked, was just, like, you're literally grinding to get, like, one pack to open. Understandable to have those sort of things to make extra money, but it's, like, if you just have things that, like, get people involved, like, that's how also another thing with, like, challenges in Reach. That was one thing I liked about Reach back in the day whenever I was a kid playing. It was, like, I would just yeah. do challenges, to, just do challenges to get the extra credits so that I could put that towards unlocking my new customization so it's like that sort of feedback loop where like you feel like you're actually getting something out of the game yes. consistently it's we rewarding. need that gratification yeah. where you actually you know you feel like you you gotta get that dopamine rush from accomplishing <laughs> even the smallest tasks and yep. that's what you know that's just content and hopefully that's like goes back to the whole engine being new hopefully we'll be able they'll be able to update things faster and come out with things more and yep. You know, it's uh, including, I mean, when you look at Fortnite, it's just a lot of buttons you have to press. And that's what makes it like, you know, 14 year olds love it because they're, they don't realize arthritis is in their future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cracked 90s or whatever they're doing. Yeah. It's yep. nuts, dude. It's so, crazy, the building in that game. But yeah. Well, same with like Smash Bros. Melee. Like they, they hit the button so fast. Yeah. Like the top level, right? And so it's like, we don't, I don't want to be spamming buttons like crazy, but, uh, but that's what makes games interesting nowadays is like mechanics. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, melee is crazy too. I don't know if you heard of or if you watch any Melee, but uh, Hacks Money. Have you heard of Hacks? Before? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a super technical fox. He he grinded the game so much that I think he had to get a tendon removed in his arm or something. Thank like it, he he messed it up so many times it like calcified or something. You got you got to read up on it. But he has like one of those twit longer things. Anyway, he ends wow. up he ended up making something called the box, which is like a, a stickless controller. It's just buttons that he presses, oh. like a fight stick, which is buttons, so that he can still play the game because the he has. Uh, so many issues with like arthritis and whatnot that he wow. can't use the controller. Crazy. Yeah, that is <laughs> I mean that's kind of that's, uh, that's what we're all going towards. <laughs> hey man, I've been clawing for a long time. I'm yeah, like, yeah. So. My hands, I, I still don't feel it. I, since I've been, I like literally started clawing from the very beginning. So uh -huh. I don't know. Maybe it'll hit me in a few more I, years. I've been clawing since I was 14, man. I think you'll be all right, as <laughs> yeah. long as you do some hand stretches. Yes, yep. I'm yep, doing yep. that right now. Actually, you guys are making me self conscious. <laughs> Looks like you're just standing there all stoic, but uh, you, also, can't see, uh, you can't see my hands. <laughs> yeah, as I say, you only see the shoulders, and yeah. he's moving his hands, stretching them all around. Uh, so please don't. See, my hair doesn't look anything like that anymore. It's short now, isn't it? It is. It is short. Do you I, miss the long hair? Ooh. Nah, man. I I've had it long for too long. It's so the maintenance is just that's required. Dude, it just hits that point. Like you, I, you've had it longer than I, I've ever had it longer. But I know whenever my hair reaches a point, it's just like I hate. Like my hair still being almost completely wet after taking a shower, and I've already dried it off for like twenty minutes. Like yeah. this is uh, this is stupid. I I can't. I need to get a haircut. You're outside uh, two hours later, and you're like, I forgot it was still wet, but it's cold now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, at least you have the luxury. I if I'm afraid that if I cut this any shorter, it won't come back because it's already <laughs> it's already oh, starting to fall out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine's falling out, bro. Twenty seven, it's game over, dude. <laughs> I, I, I feel you, man. Twenty eight now, it's 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 going, man. It's just yeah. I'm watching it just disappear. And it's like, yeah, Shit. it sucks. You just gotta embrace it, dude. You know. I want to be like saying, look at this guy. That's a thick, luscious yeah. head of hair. I'm still young. I'm still young. <laughs> He's still young. Yeah. Yeah. You Does know? your dad have hair? Oh yeah, I'll yeah. probably have hair too uh, <laughs> for a very long you're time. Like the actually. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, my dad still has hair, and he's just like sixty-nine. So, yeah, I'm, no, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you have to he's clarify blessed. every time. Yeah, he's turning seventy this year, but be blessed yeah. with the good hair, jeans. No, I mean, I, I it's, mine's falling out though, so it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> I hate myself. Go on. <laughs> You're too hard on yourself, man. That's yeah, the thing. I, I think you're you. So many people are are gassing you up. They they love you. That that somebody needs to be the negative, and unfortunately, and it has to be him. <laughs> unfortunately, it has to. Be. Um, okay, what do we got here in the chat? I'm trying to find it. Double uh, O Nine says sprint or increase normal speed. We already kind of touched on this. Uh, do a, a quick rundown. What do you guys think? Uh, you go ahead, Justin. I would like both because. End of the day, man, like it's just sprint is just kind of an FPS thing now, man. And the people are gonna be like, but it's not Halo. It's like, yeah, I don't know. The last three Halos had it. <laughs> so it's you know, it's like 
as long as it, there's a balance to like I was saying, like base player movement needs to be quick. Yeah. So that you can peek shoot and you can get information and you just don't get killed super easily. And like, you know, I, there's nothing worse than like, in my opinion, like Halo 1 where you have that floaty skating movement where you poke around a corner and you can't get around the wall fast enough. Yep. And it's like, I want, you know, I'm a Spartan. I've, I want to be a football player. I want to be able to just move around with agility. My base yep. player movement. And then I want to be able to sprint, but not that much faster so I can get to a place really quickly. So, and that's that goes back to the first question about getting younger people involved. Like mm -hmm. that just that goes to mechanics. And so yeah. I think I think Infinite's gonna have sprint no matter what, regardless of people's opinion about it. So yeah. Yep. I agree with that. I, my my sentiment about it is pretty much the same. It had the uh, the leaked gameplay already as well. People I think Druck tagged it and was like uh, sprint oh, yeah. confirmed. Yeah. In, uh, in Halo Infinite, it sucks that they're from what we've seen, they're using the Halo Five placeholder stuff, so it doesn't like look like you yeah. know, how you want it to look yet. But they know what they're doing. They're they not going to leak. I, they're I not going to leak anything trust. unless it's like intentional <laughs> at this point. Right. Like, Imagine they put like 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 big leaks in the background. That would have been such a slip. They should be. They should be <laughs> doing something at this point to get people like hyped. But yeah. they're just waiting to just. Throw it all out there at some point for some reason. I just want um, them to have a whole cinematic trailer and then Master Chief takes his helmet off and it's the Captain. <laughs> <face. laughs> yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. It's all good take Twitch ad. Yep, yeah. literally. Uh, Carmia UGC says, what is the most needed thing Halo needs to succeed? Double need there. What does Halo need to succeed? What do you think, Justin? Um, one honestly, single thing that would make or break the success of Halo. Uh, I would think it would just be continuous content and being able to adapt. Yep. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that 100%. Because the, the problem is, is like, for example, Halo 5 took so long to get rid of the uncompetitive settings that by the time that we got to the competitive settings, people already quit. Yep. And that, so the beginning of Infinite, if the settings aren't good, if they're not, if they're not competitive at all, the competitive scene is just going to disappear very quickly. People are not going to wait around. And that goes for any game that comes out nowadays, especially new games. If the yep. game isn't what people want within the first two weeks to two months, and it varies between individuals, but they're gone and they won't come back. And like for me, Fortnite is a prime example. I played Fortnite a lot. I haven't played it since last April. And the reason I haven't played it is because I hate it. <laughs> they literally kept updating the game. They never ba balanced it. And it just became a whole, it's just chaos. And then yeah. I, it got to a certain point where I'm like, man, I actually kind of hate this game, if I'm being honest. And I'm not having fun playing anymore. And I literally uninstalled it. And I have never played it again. And I don't know if I ever will touch it again. And that just is a prime example of what, what we need for infinite and need we need to be able to adapt quickly if a majority of the community doesn't like something you need to change it and try to you know find a balance there to where you can please as many people as you can yeah and you know you have to adapt and that comes down to putting in content or tip removing content and balancing it yeah it's interesting fortnite's kind of an example of of going too far the other direction like they, they were giving you what you want in terms of like consistent updates and content but then they gave us too much there's like it's changing too frequently they're adding too many new things that the competitive scene is just you know it's yeah. clown fiesta yeah, yeah i was no just gonna balance. say there needs to be like that's the, definitely the number one thing for me is just that dev support and, and it's just like the general broad like dev support whether that's just communication Mm. Yeah, on the back, like communication or just like the actual hard, like this is what we're adding, like this is the new additions or what we're going to be removing, stuff like that needs to be consistent because at least I think. So I will say I'll, I'll commend Apex another another time about like I think their schedule on their updates are pretty good. I think um, like just like the the landscape, like what they do change, it's like they're changing things that are like significant, but they're not doing it in any sort of great in terrible way it's just really small changes here and there or yeah. like things that you never even thought about like well, i think like a couple months ago whenever i was playing they gave gibraltar his dome shield like you could heal uh 20 percent faster hmm. and um awesome. and uh he like that that small little change was like impactful enough to make it like something new something that was 
which is cool. Obviously, it's like some competitive people think of that as like good or bad, but like that's what you need is like that sort of discussion right. and like that consistent discussion. And I feel like that's what was really bad with Halo 5 was like there were updates, but it's like when there were updates too, it was just so sweeping, such grand sweeping updates yes. um, that like it was either you hated it or you loved it. And most people did not love it. And then once people like, once people really had that consistent opinion, like, we hate this, it's like, yeah. well, we're not going to be able to change it for another few months, or we're not going to change it at all. Same with, like, the weapons in general. Oh. So, yeah. Also, to touch on really quick, is, like, sometimes, man, like, I think people are too quick to judge things. Like, we're not going to be able to know how good something is unless we test it out and do it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people learn by hands-on experience. <laughs> and so it's being open-minded but also being able to change quickly, like Tommy's saying, like we can't be stuck with something that's like literal ass for three months. Yeah. It's just not gonna cut it. Like people, it goes back to the instant gratification thing. Like people yeah. are gonna go do other things. There's so many avenues to do anything now. Like it's not even, it's more than just gaming. If like, if people wanna play Halo and it's not good, they go, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go play the guitar. Yeah. Like yep. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go do anything else. Like with we my We all life. have ADHD now as well, which doesn't help. <laughs> It, yeah, that's true. Looking at like four screens at a time. Yeah, uh, just yeah like, I can't yeah, focus. It's... I need, <laughs> I need constant mechanics. Yeah, yeah, I know some buttons to press. Yeah, um, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, now I'm losing my train of thought on what I was going to say to follow it up, though. You got this. No, I had two things I wanted to say. One was was uh, you talking to Unishek on the fact that with Halo Five with their updates, they had this like strict. Um, schedule like they had so like this was update one and it's going to include this and they set it way in advance so it didn't matter what kind of came up in between they had to stick to their their pipeline and that's one thing that they said that they've changed is they're they're trying to be more flexible now which is huge right being able to change the updates that we need and not necessarily having like one rigid thing planned in advance uh and the other thing was transparency just like you said transparency is going to be so huge for the success of this game this franchise uh and having that 12-month roadmap that's a huge step in the right direction. That's you know that's just one element of transparency that we absolutely need. So if we can kick it off with a good roadmap and just more communication back and forth, like like good forums and whatnot. Like I know they have like I don't know if it's like inside or or whatever the the forum is where people can you know give their feedback and get get responses back. We need that happening. That discourse yeah. happening constantly. And uh, they just yeah. need fluidity in like their actions. They can't be stagnant. They can't they can't have that H5 schedule where it's like, this is going to be this, and it's only going to be this at yes. this moment. Like, if the community hates something, it's, if, like, they make some sort of change after an update and the community really, as, like, a whole, just does not like it, you can't wait two, three months for the next content update or whatever it is uh, to make that change. Like, all right, you got to start tweaking stuff now. Maybe in a week, two weeks. Maybe let it, like, that's the thing, too, is, like, there needs to be that balance because, like, you don't want to give in. I completely understand that. Like, they can't give in to everything that we say instantly or what the community says instantly. It's like, let things settle, at least for a little bit. But there is that, there is a point where it hits that expiration date. It's like, all right, this is getting way out of hand. And I feel like that's what um, really, really drove a lot of people away from Halo 5 and yep. can't continue um, yep. in the future. All right. Thank you. Our last question, and kind of a good one to close things out on as well, is uh, Mark Owns Your Face says, is Ola and Saiyan going to compete in PC H1, H2, and H3 tourneys if they come out? What do you say, guys? <laughs> what do you guys say about that, Justin? Oh, you going to keep competing? First? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you going to go play Fortnite again? Probably not. No, <laughs> I mean, I, my thing is, man, is like I've been competing for a long time, so like Infinite's right around the corner, so... I don't see there being H1, H2, and H3 events that are going to be fit of interest. All. Exactly. Like, I don't, and including how they, number one, how they fit it all, but also, because it might just be grassroots at that point, right? Where, like, yeah. yeah. And then, I don't know, like, I don't want to stretch myself too thin trying to do too many things. And so, my main focus is infinite. Mm-hmm. And, and if infinite isn't what I want, I'm definitely not going back and playing the other Halos because I, w- I need to move on and do things with my life that you know that benefit me and so i probably won't be playing those games i already spent a whole year playing halo 3 and if i'm being honest it kind of sucked and it's not because of any reason besides that it's an old game and halo 3 is just clunky man it's a clunky game and i i'm i need some smooth stuff i need and i just need something new so it's like i don't know i don't want to be stuck in the past and just 
like looking through life through that lens, you know. Uh, that is the image of you either. It's looking forward into the future. Yeah, yeah look at that I'm light. Make a bad joke. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm looking into the light. The yeah, light exactly. and it's infinite. Please, please <laughs> save us. It's our salvation. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. I I think the way I see it is like if they keep reach events going, at least for maybe one, two max, that's the only thing I really see before like infinite information and gameplay actually starts getting dished out. Yeah. Um so it's like if that's the case, maybe I'll keep playing Reach, but if like they wanted to do I really don't see them wanting to do that. I think they just want to have like I just want I think they just want it for the community to be there. That's probably what I just see is like it, that's mainly what it is. Like people that want to play Halo on PC, this is for you. Like that's what I see this whole process being. Like I'll probably just play it. I'll probably like if that came to it, I'll just stream Halo. I'll stream Halo and some other games leading into Infinite, just like Justin's saying, like Infinite is the next step and that's all there is to it. There is no yeah. like trying to make these other games work um because i really don't think they can i think it's just that's they're gonna have to fit they're they're there for that purpose of like nostalgia and to come back to play but like yeah. you're not going to sustain an entire community on halo 1 or halo 2 right now it's just not going to happen something yeah. new is just all that's going to happen to uh reinvigorate the entire population of what halo is yeah it's a good and, point for sure and then it, it could work you know, it's going to work for some people, but for yeah. me personally, I don't think it's going to work for me. Yeah. And that's totally fine. I love Halo, and I'll always love Halo. I, you know, it's just, you know, it's part of my life. It's part of my identity. And so, you know, I I respect anybody that's going to want to play it and try to push it. That's cool. Mm. Uh, but me personally, like, I definitely don't see myself doing that for sure. Not until Halo Infinite, if it's good. Well, even if it's not good, good, as long as it's average. like As long as it's at least average. You know, it doesn't even have to... Well, okay, we want it to be the best thing yet, but because it's, yes. like, launching alongside the next Xbox, it's just, like, it's it's got to have a big explosive launch. Like, regardless of its reception down the line, it's going to... Oh, yeah. It's going to yeah. blow up when it lands, Halo has man. never had a bad launch. There's right. I mean, bad launch, like, with... People actually being got interested. That honeymoon phase. There's always gonna like everyone's always interested in Halo as soon as it launches. It's just like the keeping them coming back like that. Yes. I feel like is what is has been the struggle for Halo for a while. And if they can just nail that down and nail down the gameplay loop, like that is what's gonna keep people staying and loving Halo from here yep. on out. Yep. So infinite make or break our Halo careers, our interest in Halo overall. Uh, until we get there, we have DreamHack Anaheim in the immediate future. Are you guys are going to be grinding, I assume. Do you have any scrims coming up? You got a scrim coming up in about an hour, actually. There you go. And I'm assuming you're streaming it, say? Uh, yeah, I most likely will be. All right. Well, now you guys know where to catch it. The scrims continue. DreamHack Anaheim is less than two weeks away, guys. Thank you so much, Ola and Sane, for joining me today. A lot of fun talking. I feel like I could talk to you guys for hours. Yep. Of course. Hey, man, uh, you going to be at Anaheim? I will be in Anaheim. Well, let's continue the conversation there. Yes. Are you going to be casting in Anaheim at all? I I, sh- I shouldn't say. I don't know if I should or shouldn't say. It's not officially uh, announced. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. But I I will be there despite that. Okay. Uh, anyway, I see, I that see. doesn't really. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, let's uh let's continue right. the conversation there, man. <laughs> thanks for uh thanks for having us, man. This is wonderful, yep. and I know you've you know you've been wanting me on the show for. You know, a little bit of time now, and I'm just a butthole. So I'm no, sorry. you're not. <laughs> Honored to have you here, man. I hope you had a fun time. Uh, and yeah, just thanks again, guys. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in Anaheim. Yeah, yeah I man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a good right, one, brother. Yeah. All right, that's everything for today's episode. If you guys enjoy this and you want to watch this again or watch it in the future, you can check it out on YouTube at youtube.com slash UGC events. You can also go check the past broadcast for this stream. This also should go up on Spotify and all our podcast apps. If it's not already on the podcast apps, I'm going to bother somebody about getting them on the apps because you should be able to listen to these shows on the go and enjoy HCS Weekly on the go. That's everything for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more HCS Weekly, tune in next Tuesday, 5 p.m. CT, twitch.tv slash UGC. See you guys there.